When I was 17, I found the cold. That day I found the uh, uh, frozen over lake, very uh, attractive to go in. I did that and I never left it. And this is 46 years ago. When you go into the cold and you breathe deeper, you are able to stay longer in icy cold stress. Go face your fear. You do not need to be an adrenaline junkie to face your fear, but know that your fears are telling you something and you have the capacity to enter into it and to process it. And, uh, and the way is breathing. And it doesn't matter what kind of challenge you are up against. It's always the breath that brings you back into the moment that is able to cleanse your chemical residue uh, to be in the flow. Tell the people, breathe, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs>《Lift Off》Li《Lift Off》Here we are with the Wim Hof. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, actually, and that is because uh, today I received, uh, you know, uh, positive critics about my BBC series I just mm. did with uh, eight celebrities, so called, in Great Britain on BBC One prime time for one hour six times like a series and showing that the cold and the and the breathing are able to retrieve deep trauma mm. and to uh, uh, to give one a much deeper control over their physiology of mind and body which is you know if i have to man up that is what makes me manning up i bet yeah i mean it i love we were uh, before we even hit record you were you were almost like rapping about man talks <laughs> and i was like oh shit we got to record this <laughs> yeah man it's you hey you man talk we are humans and as we are humans we are like the men and the men and women they are different i'm so sorry i'm not a giraffe you know i'm not a giraffe i'm a man yeah, and, 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 and a woman, I respect her so much, but they are different than a man. Mm. So I'm talking to you, man. <laughs> and, and, and when men come together, and, and this is what I experienced. Then they uh, they they don't go into the panties, you know. With that, when when you're with women, I, oh, well, I'm sorry, I see a woman. It's beautiful, and then at a certain moment. I begin to talk to her as a mm. person. And like I do with man, I don't got that. Uh, with man, I go straight. And let, let, hey, man, uh, say, uh, see what we can, uh, how we can inspire each other. Wouldn't that be a great challenge to inspire each other? Not just talking about women and, uh, and the, the normal stuff. No. How can we change the world? Mm. Because mm -hmm. we are men, and men are people who rise at the moment when, the, when, 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 when something is wrong. Hey, we rise. And how do we do that? By giving inspiration, new ideas, how to solve a problem, how to go new ways. And this is, uh, this is the way I talk to you, man. I love it. I love it. Well, I feel like that's a huge part of what we're going to be talking about today, right? How do we as men challenge ourselves? You know, I think your work has brought a tremendous amount of um, change, transformation, challenge to a lot uh, to a lot of men, to a lot of women. And I know that you've done a good amount of work with men. I've seen you lead uh, a, a few experiences, and that's predominantly what I do. But before we get too far, before we get too deep into the weeds, I have to ask the question, which is tell us a story about a defining moment in your life. And I know that you have many, so I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Yeah, man, if you just drown... You were into drowning, but you don't drown. I was under ice. I, I, I lost the sight under the ice, mm. swimming. And then I swam on because there was no way to get out. There was a meter thick layer of ice upon me. And, uh, and uh, you don't think. You just go. You try to find the hole. You do, yeah, get out. And I could not. So I swam, I swam, I swam, 
I was into survival, but I never felt the agony of drowning. I never felt claustrophobic or the cold or being there in this anxiety, this fear. I was not. Uh, until uh, uh, I found myself like five minutes under the ice and being uh, uh, like uh, at the end of my energy, yet my consciousness was still there, I fell asleep. Hmm. And as I fell asleep, somebody grabbed me by the ankle back to the 50-meter hole, which is about 60 yards, and I, he brought me there, and I, uh, I, I, I took one gasp of uh, air. <sighs> and in that moment, in that moment, I lost the concept of fear of death mm. itself. Straight on. Great re realizations. They come like a flash. All right, team, this episode is also brought to you by Henson Shaving. And Henson Shaving is a family-owned aerospace parts manufacturer who has made parts for the ISS, the International Space Station, and the Mars rover. And they are now bringing some of that precision tech into the shaving experience game. So look, I'm gonna just break this down for you pretty straightforward. Number one, I don't really love shaving, if I'm really honest with you, because I'm lazy. <laughs> but what I can tell you is that I really dislike shaving when the razors are crappy. And there are some crappy razors out there that cause a ton of irritation, that get clogged up all the time. If you got like thick, coarse hair like me, they get clogged up all the time. And sometimes whether they're cheap whether they are expensive, the razors just don't work very well. And for me, I have found a great solution to that, which is Hanson's shaving. Their razors are awesome. They're phenomenal. Uh, they're very quality. I've significantly noticed less irritation on my neck when I shave, which has been wonderful because uh, I generally only shave a couple times a week. I don't do it every single day. So if you're a guy that does it every single day, I can only imagine uh, how much irritation you must go through sometimes. So this is a great option for you to check out. And I will tell you why. If you go to hensonshaving.com, it's H-E-N-S-O-N shaving dot com slash man talks choose your razor and you will get a year's worth of razor blades for free so they will include just make sure you add them into your cart but they will include a whole year's supply of razor blades and i would love for you to go check it out because i have really really enjoyed this it has made shaving much more fun much more enjoyable and much easier on my neck so i'm not getting all of the irritation so check them out let me know how you enjoyed them it sounds like a, a powerful, like a near-death experience. Well, it is a near-death experience, you know. And for those that have ha have gone through that, that's they're a profound, a profound experience. But I'm I'm curious because so much of your work, so much of what you teach, so much of what you talk about is really about how do we cognitively, consciously, physically confront fear, which is this huge huge monstrosity within especially within our modern culture you know i mean we've become inundated and just immersed in fear so can you talk just a little bit about your journey with that and then how the breath helps us to confront this beast that infringes on our freedom as as human beings it is such a complex uh, uh, complicated uh, hidden not worked out not accessible mechanism, psychic mechanism, fear, and how to approach fear. Mm. So when, when, when I suffered the death of my wife, she suicided in 95 because of schizophrenia, and uh, she kissed her kids goodbye uh, before jumping from eight stories, mm. uh, talking fear. Talking fear, they, this, she was so terrorized within her uh, mind, she was stronger than the fear of dying. Such, such powers exist in our mind. And uh, to me, at that moment, 
when I found out, of course, the, the other day I found out and I went, I, I saw I actually peace in her face. I saw peace in her face when I saw her dead body. Mm. Because she, she had been tormented by uh, this schizophrenic, this manic depression, this uh, mental disorder for years already. But actually, in, in, in society, we suffer from fears, from uh, uh, that, uh, that wh why we have no control over. And I had no control over at that moment uh, uh, in my life over fear or over her mental disorder. I had none. And then, because I was so deeply heartbroken, and being there al alone with four kids, no money, I had to go to that deep area because I was so connected to her. Mm. Neurologically, I was one with her inside, and now the other one, the other heart was gone. Mm. This test one open, it's physical. So only when I went into the icy water, I would be able to bring down this agony, this emotional agony, this being torn away. Because then at that moment, you find yourself in a position that, uh, where you uh, 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 get into the deepest of your brain, the survival brain, the adrenal axis, which is more than we can think of. Mm. It is being. There are no thoughts in survival. There are no thoughts in a reptile. And our reptilian part of our brain, which is the brain stem, is able to, uh, 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 to deal with fear, food, flight, fuck, uh, to, uh, freeze, all those things. All those things who have no names yet have enormous impact upon us. Mm. And we have no control. And now I found a way to tap through freezing cold into the, that part which has no fear, which has a solution to the fear, which is control of the mind, of the reptilian mind. Mm -hmm. And now it's here. And I, 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 we made it simple. It's there. I made just now 12 series with the BBC, and they are coming out, and it's called Freeze mm -hmm. the Fear. And I, it is an absolute doorway into that part which was inaccessible. That's why we suffer in our society so much of fear. Let me tell you, that terrorist, we got him. <laughs> I love, I love that. I love the, the, the just sort of the fierceness with that, you know, because I feel like we are in many ways being confronted by that fear in daily life. And it seems to be encroaching on a lot of people's lives, you know, just their ability to operate, think normally. And I appreciate you sharing the the story, story about your wife. You know, I think a lot of people who have family members and loved ones that go through mental disease and and really struggle uh, to deal with those types of symptoms i think it's i think it's challenging because like you said you're so connected to that person and when you lose them or you can't help them or you can't save them whether they're an alcoholic or an addict or you know they they have bipolar disorder or whatever it is there is this kind of helplessness that the people surrounding that person can get caught in. And, you know, I think having gone through, I mean, I've been doing breath work now for over a decade and I've done a ton of your work and the, you know, the, the cold immersion therapy. And I mean, it's, it's fucking powerful. It's crazy. You know, it's really potent. So can you just give us a glimpse into, because what I really hear you saying is this is scientific, but it's also deeply spiritual on some level. You know, I think I hear mirrors and tethers of like Buddhism in there and and uh, and just some of these sort of non-dual principles. And so uh, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but talk to me a little bit about how do we begin to use the breath to move into our body to confront our fears? What, is, what does that look like? Like wh wh what's actually happening physically in the body? So uh, fear comes uh, uh, through dualism. 
a, a dualism is being separated of the rest of your body or they're uh, separated actually of the rest of your own brain hmm. it, fear is a sign is a signal and it, sa it says hey you have no control what if uh, this happened or that because i can see beyond time what is going to happen in the future and you will not be ready this is what it says and then fear comes it always wants to teach you hmm. it wants to guide you to that place in the brain which is processing the fear that could be related to deep trauma that could be related to past trauma of your genetical past yet it is in the gene expressions in the cell present and it go uh, it connects with those cells and with the cells to the brain cells and then it, uh, it gets into a physical form the, uh, 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 into the brain stem unprocessed uh, uh, trauma uh, expressed by gene expressions in the dna from the past mm. so is that spiritual yes it is because we are spirits we are light we are light now and as we are in the light now we are able to process what these genetical past our ancestors could not we are now able to do that they are now spirits hmm. but we are a spirit in the light the light is uh, the nervous system it's the neurology and that uh, neurology is present in us and we can shine and shed light into our dna so uh, uh, if we go to the breathing the breathing is able uh, to go and change the biochemistry in the depth in the genes in the telomeres into the dna and now it comes i am doing a, re a new research and they found that uh, when you do these breathing techniques you deeply con uh, contract the vascular system the hundred uh, 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 the say 70 uh, 75 000 miles of uh, vascular channels ca capillaries uh, arteries and veins they are all uh, uh, in everybody the same length or something about a couple of thousand or more or uh, less over there who cares it's it's a lot mm -hmm. and uh, all that is inside and in, in those vascular channels they are accompanied by little muscles primitive muscles and uh, uh, millions of them and as we go into the cold or into a deep breathing they will contract uh, forcefully uh, deeply and as we do this deep uh, breathing we bring down the carbon dioxide and then we uh, bring down with that the breathing reflex the breathing trigger so after doing 40 of these deep breaths you don't need to breathe for say one minute or two minutes or three minutes and that is a signal to the deepest part of the brain uh, uh, when you don't breathe so, such a long time the deep uh, 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 brain stem the reptilian brain it then it triggers it says hey stop breathing anymore we need to shoot out uh, adrenaline it spikes twice as much as somebody who is going into a bungee jump hmm. competitive study said blood proof oh uh, uh, in fear so people in fear doing a bungee jump they've measured the adrenaline in the blood just before going and then people doing these breathing techniques they had twice as much adrenaline wow so that that is that is huge that uh, that is one after one and a half minute what happens they had never seen that before in heart films eg's or ecg's electrocardiograms whatever it was not grams it were kilos uh, amazing what happened because they saw five times more blood flushing into the brain and the heart hmm. five times more that is like boosting with five times more blood flow it, that's a, a brainstem reflex of survival to uh, to preserve the organs, hmm. the, the the liver, 
the the lungs, the the heart and the brain, and at that it is able to boost uh, uh, the electrical system of the heart in people with uh, 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 deprived. A heart condition through long-term slow blood flow mm -hmm. that is hundreds of millions of people at least because killer number one in our society is a, a cardiovascular related disease yeah. uh, uh, that is what but then on top on top corner and this is when man rise when man real man rises when they shed light into the deepest and free mm. those captivated spirits every trauma happened here in this life or in former lives genetically they have an, a cardiovascular imprint mm. <clears throat> that is a cardiovascular imprint beyond your understanding it happens when trauma happens and uh, that has a storage capacity. So every trauma has a cardiovascular imprint. Now, when you do this uh, breathing exercises, you go into extreme uh, contraction of the vascular system, the 75,000 kilometers, millions of little muscles, and then extreme opening. Mm. That is like shaking off the cardiovascular imprint or the trauma mm. we found it and so now people need to do this if they have psychiatric problems uh, mental problems mental disorders of any kind you better do this and uh, uh, very eloquently i will then uh, tell the people in, in beautiful english it is breathe motherfucker <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah yeah it's i mean it's so it's so funny because it's so simple and i think it's i think the simplicity of it is confronting for people you know that the breath that we take for granted that we don't think about that's automatic that's just sort of happening throughout the day can wield such power somatically within our body within our minds within our within our you know connecting us to our spirit and so um yes i mean it's it's really potent so it so is. i love the the idea that you know we store that anxiousness anxiety depression trauma etc in the body that there's a that there's a an imprint within that part of our body and that this is a release for that part right because i think what you're really saying is in some ways this helps us to confront the breath can help us to confront the unconscious physiological or somatic um fears that we don't even know are there but are constantly holding us back is that roughly accurate uh, no know uh, it is accurate uh, it's absolutely direct if you cleanse yourself of the chemical residue coming from uh, drama and or stress and this is the way to cleanse yourself of that uh deep uh, uh biochemical residue or the shit the bad shit get the bad shit out and you feel clean you feel in the air and now mm. beautifully you see the depth of the water like the ripples of the on the surface are gone you suddenly see the depth of the water that is pure spirituality it's pure mm. zen that is actually the way we we are mm. and so i have i mean i have so many questions and i'm just i'm so excited that you're here so you know, I remember back in the day, my so in my previous career, I was an opera singer. I sang classical music, and what ah! exactly? You nailed it. I love it. And so up until that point, I never really paid attention to my breath. But then all of a sudden, when I started singing, it was all about the breath, and I started to realize how constricted I was, and and how anxious I was, and I started to realize how how connected my nervous system and my breath actually were. And so I'm hoping that maybe you can just give a little bit more context for the listener of what's 
what role does the breath play in being able to help us regulate uh, our our nervous system, right? From this high stress, high anxiety, uh, to depression, to a, a more sort of balanced sense of homeostasis. How does that actually function? Yes, the heart rate variability. Uh, if, if you have to do something very difficult and you tense up because of your own expectations, your own mindset, make you tense up, oh, it's coming, it's coming, because it has a real influence. The neurology of the mindset is uh, real. But then uh, if you tense up, you tend to block your flow, mm. your being in the moment. And uh, this is where people uh, don't know uh, what to do. And then I say, just do these uh, uh, little breath holds. Now hold it for 20 seconds. You do that, uh, this, uh, I mean, I'm not going to do it 20 sure. seconds, but it is clear. Three, uh, three deep breaths. And then uh, hold after the exhalation for 20 seconds. Anybody can do. It's amazing. And you do that 10 times in a row, you completely broke the neurology, which is dependent on the breath, mm. but you got completely broke the neurology, which uh, uh, has been caused by your expectations. I have to go maybe a little bit deeper, uh, but this works anytime. Mm -hmm. Anytime you are in front of something very difficult or you got to solicit for a work, a new work, a job interview or a big speech on stage uh, or whatever, it doesn't matter. It always works that if you detense yourself through doing this bre uh, breathing, you actually uh, break the cycle in which you got in through your uh, willful uh, intent. Uh, which uh, uh, knows how to prepare, but then it, it ignites a deep uh, state of anxiety. What if, what if, what if? Yeah, it's like a fight of the mind. And that creates a, 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 a all kinds of uh, a, a, yeah, confusion confusion in your, in your being at that moment. And it, uh, it is tensed, therefore, because you've got to be on top of that. But uh, you do this and simply you break all the neurology caused by this. You will break it in the meantime. And I'm, I'm here with this and my cat, <laughs> the two, I got two bangles here and they are really uh, getting into my leg. Oh, they already caused blood <laughs> here, here and here. They're, they're know, going here. after you. They're, <laughs> they're really yeah. They, yeah. yeah. Because they see me uh, talking yeah. here, I must be on fire, <laughs> and and they can feel. You can't you can't lie to cats. Cats it's know true. they feel. Once again, if I, I I did a study in Detroit, and it showed that only by using my intention, the willful uh, intent, I could stop uh, cold water uh, of making my skin temperature going yeah. down. That is the power of your will. Imagine when that is in conflict. Then it creates all kinds of blockages, anxiety. And this is what we experience because we do not have real control mm. over our mind. Only then it takes experience and all. Oh. But uh, to have a universal, deeper control over the physiology at will, uh, for that, uh, you do the breathing because then you get back into the moment and you resume. And then there is no shit. There is no chemical residue at that moment present because you clean, uh, cleanse it. We showed in university studies how to become alkaline doing this breathing techniques in very fast. And then it stayed all day, blood proof all that. It stayed all day in, in inside the body, the right uh, uh, alkalinity, the right pH levels, and uh, and that uh, when the pH levels are right, your body listens to your will because your will is neurology, mm. 
and neurology needs to travel in an alkaline environment and not soreness. But soreness is created when you get into stress and it converts into chemical residue blocking your performance. Yeah, I was, uh, this is one of the things that I wanted to dig into with you because I, you know, I've heard you talk before extensively about inflammation, the impacts on the body, how it can impact our HRV, um, and this notion of positive stress. Right, I, I think it's correlated with hormesis. I'm not 100 percent sure. I could I could be mis mislabeling yes. that, but but no. this notion that positive stress is going to help balance the body. So, can you just tell a little bit about why it's so important for your body to have a natural alkaline state? Just a little bit more of that, and and how breathing helps to balance the pH within the body because that's wildly fascinating. Yes, and it goes very swift. Uh, uh, so whenever you have a difficult situation, uh, do the breathing and go into uh, acute hormesis. I call it a self-inflicted acute stressful exercise, <laughs> a, a hormetic exercise with other words. And that is... <sighs> 20 seconds without breathing, alkalizes the blood because... <sighs> brings down the carbon dioxide, pH levels go up, 20 seconds, no breathing, causes uh, hormesis. Mm -hmm. but that is acute self-inflicted stressful exercise that optimizes the performance uh, ability of our bodies and mind. It's all in. So, very shortcut. Just do this breathing. And, 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 and do it. Anytime you got, are standing in front of something very difficult, you do this, it's going to work. And it doesn't matter what kind of challenge you are up against. Mm. It's always the breath that brings you back into the moment that is able to cleanse your chemical residue uh, to be in the flow. Because flow is our natural state. Yeah, I mean, I feel like most people, and this is a generalized statement, but I feel like most people are so inundated with the negative stress in their life, right? The stress that they don't want, that there's no sort of, they don't, they lack a sense of control internally, right? Because it's like, well, fuck, I can't control anything. I have all this stress, all these bills, the mortgage to pay, the kids are doing this, you know, there's all of these things that we can't control. And, and I think what's potent about what you're saying is, but there are things that we can control that, that we can uh, influence within ourselves that are going to equip us to face that external stress, right? And so having this positive stress within the body is important. So what puts you on this path? Because I know you did a bunch of yoga and Tai Chi and, and boxing and stuff. like. I mean, I know you tried a bunch of different things, but what puts you on the path of breath and cold? Because breath is a very sort of spiritual practice so were you searching for something and and how did you come across this combination of breath and cold yes uh when i was 17 i found the cold uh, at the age of 17 i was already uh, a, a quite a philosopher debater mm. into my thinking brain i was thinking so much uh, uh, so uh, that day i found a uh, uh, frozen over lake very uh, attractive to go in. I did that, and I never left it. And this is 46 years ago. And uh, uh, that's what it is. So uh, 46 winters, I've been practicing going into the cold because there is no other stressor that teaches you so well to control the stress mechanisms of our mm. body and then uh, the cold and from the cold comes the breath because logically when you go into the cold and you breathe deeper you are able to stay longer in in the icy cold stress because you still change part direct your uh, biochemistry by breathing deeply <sighs> i change the body at uh, becoming a uh, ph level goes up and then the adaptive uh, power is stronger, is more swift, because in the end, it's the neurology that needs to change. Mm. It needs to direct uh, the hormonal secretions. All the mechanisms in the body are driven by the signals of the neurology, 
neuro uh, uh, neuro signals they are and they go best in the alkaline environment how so always keep you cool and stay within the breath and then your body goes with the speed of light because that's what is electricity neurology is the light mm. so you better stay in the light and not in the darkness of the being sore uh, and not being able to get out of a situation because you are sore because you are blocked creating fear because the next time you don't know i'm not going to go back into that is what your subconscious then is telling you but you have to learn to go into the subconscious to go into the brainstem to go into the fear to process it all through breathing mm -hmm. Sorry, so simple, and there it is. So breathing is able to tap into the deepest of our fears of, of the now of this life of the, this tra uh, uh, life uh, experience traumas or the past lives, uh, creating a, a fear where you don't want to go anymore in your subconscious. And that's why you avoid. While you should go straight on, like rice, man, and uh, 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 and confront yourself. Go face your fear. You do not need to be an adrenaline junkie uh, to face your fear, but know that your fears are telling you something, and you have the capacity to enter into it and to process mm. it. And uh, and the way is breathing. I was going to say it, it almost like some of this for the people that haven't done breath work before, but have done psychedelics might sound somewhat similar, you know, the confrontation with fear, the experiences in the body that manifest, right? The tingling sensation, in the body, the confrontation with the subconscious and the unconscious, the meeting of past trauma. Have you found any sort of corollaries or, or connections between psychedelics and, and the work that happens there and breath work? It's more of a random question. Maybe you don't have any sort of connection, but I thought I'd dive in. No, I have a, a great connections because when I was 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, uh, I did psychedelic uh, journeys with uh, drugs. Uh, they uh, are unknown. They, you only can find them in, uh, in, 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 in literature from, from the Middle mm. Ages, like Atropa Belladonna, mm -hmm. like uh, Stramonium, Devil's mm, Wheat, okay. much stronger than anything. And uh, I took it without really knowing what I was doing. <laughs> but I took on the challenge and, you know, I took it like in the park, in a, a, in a, in a, a, a herbarium, like a wheat uh, where, where they uh, uh, cultivate uh, herbs uh, and all, you know, there I took them. And then I found myself naked, uh, waking up other day <laughs> in, my, uh, uh, in my apartment, mm. you know? I don't know how I um, I must have gone, but uh, I went all this journey and uh, the journey inside. I was completely in a, a subconscious. I I remember things like I saw dead people, mm. I saw dead Germans and people and uh, 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 strange things. Uh, I saw so the coral. I think I must have awakened something very deep there, and the rest of my life was. I did not need any drugs to get to the depth of myself because it was already awakened. And, uh, and now I, I, I see uh, uh, all these people taking ayahuasca, ibogaine, psychedelics, uh, mushrooms, MDMA. They do the breathing and they say it's an or similar or it helps them to process the, the drugs in a spiritual journey to find themselves to open up to awaken deeper physiology because uh, we are not schooled in that deeper physiology because the society sucks uh, uh, serving a system that is not serving the planet nor uh, our spirituality mm. so we gotta find it ourselves and i did it uh, by doing uh, it that way no there are great uh, 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 benefits by taking uh, psychedelics the right way, absolutely, uh, especially with uh, very hard 
uh, traumatic uh, uh, blockages inside to break through. Otherwise, these people don't get through. It's too big. It's too uh, accumulated, yeah. too much. It's like atrophied. Well, it, takes, it takes over almost and, uh, all of their identity, both consciously and unconsciously, right? It becomes such a huge part of the ego and the identity that there's almost it's almost it's yes. almost incomprehensible that they could you know move past it in a way where they're not that right where that's where that's not occupying so much real estate within the city of their mind yes exactly and so uh, these breathing exercises we teach and the eyes together they are very potent very powerful but if, if it is not altogether uh, uh, sufficient then I would say uh, take some uh, exogenous drugs. Exogenous, that means not endogenous, exogenous. But for most of the people, the endogenous drugs inside ourselves, that is the opioids, the cannabinoids, the dopamines, the adrenalines, they are all inside. But if it is too difficult sometimes, I say, hey, uh, use a little bit of something else, like a, like Cr uh, crutches mm. if you if you get some crutches yeah yeah it's you're not gonna uh, walk all uh, life with crutches uh, at a certain moment you don't need them anymore you are healed it's not to take drugs it's to use drugs to not need drugs mm. no more for yeah. healing yeah i mean it's it's interesting i asked the question partially because i've i mean i've done a a good amount of experimentation with psychedelics and i remember going down to costa rica and having an experience down there where the beginning and the end there was a long transformational breath work that was done at the very beginning at the very end and then four i think it was yeah four uh ayahuasca ceremonies and the breath work sessions were much more powerful for me than the ayahuasca ceremonies and I've and I've just ah. found that to almost always be the case that breath work and this is personally for me breath work has always been one of the most pow powerful and potent access points to my unconscious to my somatic and, and physiological experience and so I was curious about that and and then I guess the the to dovetail off of that are there is there a release that can come through breath work of like DMT or the can the cannabinoid system within the body is that oh yeah no absolutely uh, uh, that's uh, the, we are the first one to show in scientific uh, brain scans in scientific research how to enter into the endocannabinoid system uh, uh, and that is the uh, periaqueductal gray hemisphere that is where the cannabinoids and the opioids are being produced. And what do you need uh, for uh, healing? You need uh, opioids and you need uh, cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a healing actually is a pleasant uh, experience. It's not like, oh, it's painful and now you have to go through. No, it's a great experience. It's the awakening of your power to enter into the deepest of your brain to become one with the omnipotent power of the mind or the uh, limitless power of the mind uh, it's all mm. there that is the healing all about <laughs> the healing the one who becomes a healer becomes holy from being half and unconscious he becomes conscious mm. he becomes a, a, a connected with the deepest part of the brain and once you become in connection with the deepest part of the brain consciously then wherever you cannot go, where 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 is it where you cannot go anymore? You get hundred percent control over mm. the brain, not sixteen according to science, hundred, and that's what we showed all also. So I, I tell every man to rise to his beautiful mind, his deep potential, because you got it, and it's not mm. far away. It's right within you. And it's accessible and we know the tools we are passing it on with this podcast another podcast with an interview with the film I'm, I'm doing a Hollywood film now I'm, uh, I'm doing a, a, the BBC series I do scientific research it's because it's time to become timeless mm. it's time to become one with the soul with the full potential of who and what we are 
consciously. And it's all there. And we don't need drugs from the outside anymore as much. It is the breath work, as you say. It is the breath that connects us with the deep spirit the, uh, between the mind, the, the invisible mind and, uh, uh, and body. And it has now become physical. And this is what I've been showing in, in Detroit as well. Uh, is what the professors say. Wim Hof has found the secret of placebo. Mm. And uh, 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 placebo is no longer some suggestive power. No, it's you who takes it on consciously. I am in control over my body and my mind. It's nothing more than logical. It's time that we connect with the deepest part of our brain and thus take over all the brain with that our subconscious and realize, bring up and make conscious what was subconscious and with that the full splendor of our soul emanating there from and, and, and radiate every day and give directions to those who are still in the dark, who are still in the fear, because they have no control. And that's why we are here talking mm. like this. That's why we went uh, searching into the journeys, as you speak, in Costa Rica and uh, in, uh, 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 in uh, me in the Netherlands. doesn't matter. It is all the same planet. We are here with an absolute purpose and we can uh, uh, share the tools for everybody to uh, discover their own beautiful mm. mind. That's, yeah, I mean, that's, I love it. I feel like that just needed a, a moment of silence almost, <laughs> you know, to just let that really sink in um, because it is, it is powerful, you know, and I feel like what you're advocating for is that confrontation of fear and the liberation of our own constraints you know, the constraints that we have because of family, trauma, society, culture, the shitty systems that we have, you know, that we operate in oftentimes, whether it's education or whatever, and and to confront it, you know, and it, it was interesting because I put out, I let a lot of the men, I run this online group with a ton of guys from all, all over the world. And I said, hey, I'm interviewing Wim Hof. And one of the main questions that came back was this question about what happens when they're actually doing the breath work. So a lot of people, as they're doing breath work, they feel or they, you know, they feel this tremendous sort of surge of energy in the body. Maybe they see shapes or sights. And it's funny because so many people start to ask, why am I feeling this way? And what am I seeing? you know, which was a very interesting thing. So many people have questions about why, why am I feeling these certain, you know, heat in the face or tingling in the hands or the, the shapes, like the, I see these shapes. And one of the main questions is why am I afraid to fully let go? And why do I feel like if I let go, I'll disappear completely? And so I'm, I'm wondering if you can just speak to some of that commentary, because that seemed to be very popular with a lot of the, a lot of the men that I asked. Yeah, the, no, I, I know the physical uh, uh, The physical science is simple. You, uh, you alkalize the blood so much that your pH levels go up, by which the neurology of our body, the neurosignals, they go berserk. They go berserk, they go everywhere where they could not mm. go before. Because now uh, the pH levels are so favorable, they go everywhere. And they are searching, where is a blockage? Where is it? I stream on. And you just better get a hold of me because I'm the light. I go through you. So what is your decision? Where do you want to go? What is your intention? Who are you? It's all there. And then uh, uh, any question, any intention will be met mm. at that moment. That is one. Two, people who have fear of uh, disappearing. Hey man, we uh, with this breathing technique, we are going to the uh, uh, past the conditioned mind, past the consciousness. It doesn't. Uh, 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 it, you will not lose yourself, but you will go past the conditioning. And if you are too much into controlling, then you 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 will be washed away. You just have to go with the flow, because it wants to go where you have not been, and where you should mm. have been. Because that's you. 
You go to the inner child, you go to your sensitivity, you go to your hidden uh, traumas, your fears. Your, it's the inner child you go to. So let it go and feel the love for going over there because you are retrieving the inner child. The one who has been suppressed but oh, I cannot, oh, oh uh, put on a face, an uh, attitude, a shield, and petrify it uh, for the rest of your life. No. Find your inner child. Find your sensitivity. Find your soul driven mm. by love. Love is stronger than fear. Go for mm. it. So good. So, so, so good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the thing that stood out to me there the most is like, what you are being confronted by is that you're moving away from the prefrontal cortex clinging to the rational mind you know because we've i mean in our especially in western culture we've over indexed the rational you know we've pedestaled it we've turned it into this god and i think part of what you you know we've deified it and part of what you're talking about is like you connect with a different form of intelligence within you that is bigger larger more powerful than the rational mind is that am i am i paraphrasing correctly or what would you what would you alter connor well what i would alter and say uh, my subconsciousness my subconscious mind is mm -hmm. working for me i don't need to control the subconscious mind i don't need to uh, control intuition and instinct i don't need to be a uh, controlling from a petty mind the greatness of the mind I let it go. I let it fly. I'm not in politics. I'm not right wing. I'm not left wing. I'm both the wings. Mm. I'm flying. I go in life. It takes its own direction. I just follow. And I am uh, uh, obedient therein. I bow humbly every day to its greatness. And then, then suddenly the greatness comes to you. And now, uh, uh, Connor, I am going to change the world. Uh, it's not me. It's happening. And that is the greatness if you put out your intention and you wait and you pray and you are humble. It comes back and it will manifest. The unlimited power of the mind is a mm. servant. But let the servant do and not control, be controlled by our little pettiness of one and one is two, and uh, uh, and uh, New York is a big apple town, and uh, and in 19, uh, 1863, the slavery in America and the U.S. was being abolished by uh, Lincoln, and uh, you know all these petty little facts, and they want to control all. Come on, let it go. When you are in love, you don't think. You let it go. You follow. So follow the love of life and you will become the greatest of what uh, uh, inconceivably great within and uh, 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 out there. And it's all, it's all, it's a mechanism. It's a physical mechanism. So uh, right now I'm uh, reaching about a hundred million people. Wow. I think, uh, but I, I, I want to go for uh, billions of people. And with that, yeah, uh, go f uh, far over the critical point and change people uh, 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 by giving them tools to find autonomy, everybody within mm. themselves and make it simple like we do and talk about it right now. We are man. We arise and we bring timelessness. We bring happiness, st strength and happiness. That is prosperity because mm. we are man. Human. <laughs> well, I feel like we came full circle. I want to honor your time today. Um, I feel like we, we only have a, a few minutes left, um, but I feel like I could talk with you all, all day, honestly. Uh, before I ask you the final question, um, I just want to acknowledge you for the impact that you've had. You know, I know so many people in my life, so many people who have been touched by your work, whose lives have radically and unequivocally changed. And I'm sure that you hear it all the time, but I would be remiss. I would really be uh, beside myself if I didn't tell you how deeply your work has impacted me and the people in my life. You know, there's in Vancouver, British Columbia, there's friends that I know that go, you know, almost every single day uh, and sit in the, you know, glacier runoff lakes and, and rivers and, uh, 
<laughs> and I go out here to the lake, you know, it's it like it, it, right after it uh, unfroze and the cold showers. And I mean, I, I love it. And so uh, just honestly, deeply from, from the bottom of my heart, I wanted to say thank you. The last question is, is a little bit more around how fear manifests in the body, because I know that you've talked a lot about inflammation. I know you've talked a lot about this sort of physical component. Is is inflammation connected to our fear? Is it a response to us living in this sort of constrained and confined way? Is that a, is that a part of it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Fear is physical. Inflammation is physical. It's only a reaction on something that should not be there, mm -hmm. but it's there. And uh, the question is, can we get rid of it? Yes. That, uh, therefore, you do the breathing. If you do profound breathing in a day that you have to perform a lot, you, ba you better do it profoundly because then you cleanse yourself. Uh, uh, just recently, uh, I did 12 programs, 12 episodes in eight days. And uh, I breathed like crazy in the morning, but I was clean every day. And at 200 people's production, I could, uh, and I was in the in mm. the center of it all. <laughs> I had to perform, you know, like no, I'm not a TV presenter or something. I'm just my being myself. But uh, to be uh, 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 having uh, uh, shot all kinds of questions and cut and uh, go from the top and do this and do that and then have very intimate uh, 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 conversations and, uh, 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 and, uh, and deep co uh, connections with people who have to face their fears and all to be the big daddy, to be the big guru or the big teacher or whatever, the missionary or whatever, they come up and it has become very successful. Mm. It's the breathing. It's the breathing always. It doesn't matter the way fear manifests or is interrelated psychosomatically to inflammation. Fear is unprocessed trauma. You can get rid of it. And if fear still exists inside, it, it, it is uh, 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 influencing into the biochemistry. And that can deregulate our immune system uh, uh, through, co of course, uh, uh, through the inflammation. Inflammation is nothing more than a deregulated immune system caused by biochemical stress. And that is caused by fear. Fear is physical. So to de-abstract the thing, fear, that is the best to understand what is fear. And then uh, uh, fear can be dealt with. The physical counterpart of what fear is, which is a, a biochemical residue, uh, mm. needs to be processed. And it's done by... If you had every man in the world, this is how we're going to close it down. If you had every man in the world sitting in front of you, what would you tell them? Breathe, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh. do it. It's the oh, greatest. Man. I love it. Well, Wim, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll have the links to all your work in the show notes. When does the BBC doc come out? When does that series come out? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yesterday was... Uh, 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 yeah, yesterday evening was okay. the first one, and the second one, you know, uh, every week one on Tuesday, 9 p.m. Awesome. British time. Awesome. Well, for everyone out there, check out Wim's work. Go follow along. Get your breath on. Get your ass into the cold water. Thank you so much for joining. And until next time, this is Connor Beaton signing off. 